if you could share the saga behind Hammer King or the origin story of the band? Absolutely. Um, um, we started in 2015 when we got together to play basically uh, traditional metal again. I mean, we had been together in, in bands before that, some of us uh, at the same time in the same bands, and mainly the music we did then was not fully traditional metal, but we tried to find different things in heavy metal. So it was a bit more like music from your head instead from your heart. And I remember in 2015, um, it was clear that I would not be making another album with Ross the Boss. I did two albums with Ross the Boss and I always thought it would be three, but it ended up being two. And therefore, I had the, the feeling that I still wanted to, to make this more traditional music. And I remember talking to the guys in the band and uh, we, we tried just one song in a very traditional fashion. And um, that was the song that would be um, Glory to the Hammer King from the first album then. Uh, we played it and I remember it was so simple compared to other things that we usually did that everybody was smiling like this because it was it was like your favorite toy, your favorite holiday. It was just, just so, so enjoyable to do it. There was room for, for choirs, for, for vocals, for long guitar solos again. And um, I remember we had this song and um, our original bass player KK would come up with another part um, the next day and I had another part which was in the same key so we just put it together and we had Kingdom of the Hammer King which would be the song that basically kicked everything off and within a couple of weeks maybe four weeks five weeks we had um, thrown away all other songs that we, we had written before and had 11 new songs so that was the moment where we really could feel if something goes that quickly it feel, feels so great. It must be something good. And we, we, we decided to, to start a new band that, that very moment and, and call ourselves Hammer King. And I remember going to, what is it called, Metal Archives, the huge database that everybody uses. And I thought, there will be at least 20 bands that use the name Hammer King. And nobody had that name. And I really I, I didn't believe it. So I thought maybe that was just right for us. And yeah, we made the album Kingdom of the Hammer King in 2015. We wanted to have a quick follow-up, so we did King is Rising in 2016. We had Poseidon will carry us home in 2018. And then um, we wanted to, to change labels, not because we were not happy with Cruz del Sur, which was super fantastic, but we thought that the people who usually buy Cruz del Sur music are not typical Hammer King fans. And at the same time, we did not reach the people who might be Hammer King fans. So we... We're looking for, for other labels, and in the end, we, we got the, the chance to be with Napalm, which was exactly where we wanted to be. And um, then the corona thing, this COVID thing happened, which was bad, and we had to sort of push back the album a little bit. Therefore, the next album was not in 2020, but in 21. And then we had the 21 album. We played as many shows as possible, which was difficult during that time, of course. And when the festival started going again in 2022, we had an album that was already one year old. So the people asked us, Would it, wouldn't it be uh, nice to have a new album for the festivals then? And we said, okay, we can try it and, and do another one. And we did Kingdomonium exactly in time for the festivals in 2022. And then we said, okay, we've been very busy. We've played shows and everything. Let's not make an album in 2023. So that was the plan. And we sort of, um, sort of kept uh, true to that plan, which means we did not release an album in 2023, but we made another album because we heard um, by June, probably June 2023, we heard that the, the, the War Kings might be open to having us on their tour. And uh, that was, of course, the band that we would like to be with other than Power Wolf, who are already too big for us at this moment. So that was the chance that we wanted to have. And again, it was, uh, could you maybe have an album for the tour? He said, yes, no problem. We had no songs at all, but we started working like like idiots, actually. Like um, in seven weeks, I think we had 15 songs and um, we finished 14, 14 of them, recorded all 14 and have 10 on the album. Two are the bonus tracks and two are really unused. And we will hit the road exactly in one in one week. So uh, here we go. This is König und Kaiser. Uh, long story, relatively short. You mentioned the traditional metal. Uh, somebody would say a blend of maybe heavy metal and power metal. Uh, but how would you describe the sound in your own words? 
Uh, I mean, it's a tricky thing. Um, I've always been one of these people who say, um, I understand heavy metal and I understand thrash metal and death metal. Maybe I understand doom. But other than that, things get tricky. I mean, I do not really feel the, the, the thin line between thrash metal, death metal and black metal. It's Thrash metal is different, but black metal and death metal for me, mm, it's almost hard to distinguish without really going into the details. And the same goes for heavy metal and power metal. I mean, if you look at one of my favorite bands, which is Saxon, they played boogie metal at the beginning of the career, hairspray metal in the 80s, pop metal in the early 90s, and then they turned very, very heavy throughout the later years. Um, are they heavy metal? Are they power metal? What are they? I mean, Saxon are heavy metal. What, Whatever sub-direction they had chosen and I think for us that might be the same. I would say I'm absolutely happy if people say we're power metal. I uh, personally just say it's heavy metal because you never know what we will do on the next album but we are heavier now than we used to be three years ago but um, we're still metal, power metal, heavy metal, whatever. We call it royal metal just to tease the people and have yet another name for it but anyway heavy metal is fine, power metal is great, whatever. Excellent. Excellent pronunciation. Um, yeah, well, like, like always in, in, in music, um, I think inspiration is what really makes music. So when we started writing the songs in this relatively short time, we just went full steam ahead. Whatever we could do, whatever idea we had, we, we listened to all of them, we tried all of them, and whatever really felt great, we kept an everything else we threw away. So basically we, we ended up having, as I said before, these uh, 14 songs and one of the last songs that we were working on uh, had the um, working title Infinite King and um, that was a song where I did not find a proper melody to sing in the chorus. It was either too slow and boring or it was far too happy. So that was not really an easy choice for it. And I remember one day driving down the highway with my car and, and I was going to the rehearsal room and maybe 10 minutes before I arrived there I suddenly had an idea. And I thought, okay, that might work. And I kept repeating it for 10 minutes straight until I went there and could record it. And then um, our drummer Dolph would show up that day and I showed him that piece of music and I said, Dolph, I think we have it. The problem is, for whatever reason, I sang in German and I never sing in German, usually. For whatever reason. So whenever I try to get rid of the German words and replace them with English, the song started sounding smaller again, for whatever reason. And then uh, Dolph listened to the track and said, you know what, I think it really sounds interesting the way it is. Keep it German. But the lyrics were nonsense lyrics. So I said, okay, the end is something like, dieses Land braucht ihn Infinite King. This country needs him Infinite King. It doesn't even sound sensible in English and you cannot mix the, the languages here. And he said, yeah, what, what country, what, what king could this country need? The Hammer King, of course. And I said, oh, that's very good. That's very good. I should have thought of that. It's very simple. Let's keep that. But we have the Kaiser in the middle, the Emperor. What do we do with that? Um, we cannot sing Hammer Kaiser, that's absolutely BS, I mean. And he said, yeah, my father, he told me, his father, he was a, a history teacher and there were people in history that uh, acted as king and emperor at the same time, which I had never heard of before. And so therefore Dolph said, why not sing König und Kaiser? And I thought, that's interesting because in, in German language, the word Kaiser is so classic that's, that's bigger than Emperor. It's just so German in a way. The Kaiser. Oh my goodness. So we thought, okay, Kaiser sounds fantastic. And we, we had the plan because we knew we would end up, probably end up being on the tour with the War Kings. Um, there was this plan to ask the, the Tribune to sing on a song of ours. So um, we thought this song would be very perfect because it's in a, in a, in a speed that is very, very perfect for his style of vocals. And we, we offered the song to him and uh, he agreed gladly. And at the same time, we added the trumpets on, uh, onto the song. So the song was very different from the others, very colorful. And sooner or later, somebody in the band said, ah, that would be an interesting choice for a title track. And I remember I was the guy who said, I know that Napalm Records will not like um, the German title for an English language album. So that's usually what they don't like. 
and we ask Napalm, and in that case, this is Meek, the vocalist from Visions of Atlantis, who is our product manager, and he's Italian. And Meek said, I'm Italian, I like it. I think I will ask the guys in the company if we keep it that way. And we kept it. Everybody thought it was interesting. There were two or three people who thought it might, might be problematic, and all of them were Germans. Nobody from the other countries ever thought it was a problem. Everybody liked it. And I must say, it's funny. It's, it's really interesting to hear people from so many different countries saying the German uh, album title, even with the dotted O, which is a weird thing, actually. And I think everybody, other than two, there's only two people being around where it, it didn't sound proper. And everybody else spoke it perfectly. So I think it's it's very interesting to have that. It's, it's a connection between between languages, in a, in a way. And yeah, that's that's basically the reason why we had König und Kaiser as the album title, because we thought the song is a good choice. And then we asked Peter Schalai, who did the artwork, do you think you have an idea for the, the king also being an emperor? And Peter said, fantastic, let's combine that war image of the king with the noble image of a Kaiser, and let's mix the two styles. And we thought it's it's, it's a cool idea, and his, his artwork was very good from the very beginning, so it's... Um, inspiration, coincidence, whatever, but it, it really just happened that way. We have a quite good story here of a one song, but how do you usually approach songwriting? Um, I think, I said that before this day, I think we are a band who pretty much like not changing things too much. I mean, having... If you think of, of maybe your favorite bands, in my case, that might be Saxon or even the Pretty Mates from Denmark, um, once they have an album that really suits them well, I always hope that they will do at least five albums that are exactly this way and as good as that. And usually that sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. But um, we, we always thought that as long as we are not bored with our style, there is not really a need to change it too much. So therefore, our main goal when writing songs is let's have another album in the same direction with 10 more fantastic songs. And mostly it happens, sometimes it's close to that. I mean, not all albums are equally as strong in my opinion, but they're all far above what I would say is at least good. And um, in this case, we, we just wanted to have an, a, so an album again that is very, very approachable, very, very much made for, for the live performances because we knew we would be on tour. And uh, when, when I see that we usually will have like 500, 600 people on the Walkings tour, I'm very sure that maybe 100 already know Hammer King. Maybe it's 200, I don't know, but not all 600 people will have seen us before. And so it's it's very helpful to have songs that everybody can easily get into and remember once they go home. So therefore, we wanted to have a song, an, an album full of, of songs that are predestined to be played live. And I think compare, compared to, to King Demonium, which was a bit of a darker album, we have an album that really is made for the live performance again and that was the goal and we're happy i think we did it as you said the songs are geared for live performances but how do you like prepare to bring the essence uh in the live performance i must say um it's it's, it's really difficult to to find the the, the right to, to understand what you do i mean when when you do when you play music um as long as, as it is the music that you really want to play. I mean, sometimes there is people in the band playing a different style, but we do the music that we really um, have inside ourselves. There is not much magic behind it, not much tricks behind it. We just play whatever feels natural to us. And in the end, of course, once we have settled on the songs and now that we know that the tour is coming up, we have rehearsed a lot. We get together in the same room. We don't work over the internet. We, um, we got ourselves uh, an India system now so that we really can hear precisely what we're doing, focusing on really playing together as a unit very much. And it was a change to work that way, but it, it quickly showed that we, we, we got far better than ever before because you can very much focus on what you really do. You mentioned uh, Power Wolf and, uh, of course, uh, how was uh, working with Charles Grey Wolf for you? Well, Charles is, um, by coincidence, living mainly in the same area as we do. So when we when we started Hammer King, we were looking for, for somebody who 
was already in the game, which means we wanted to work with somebody who really knows how to do this sort of music. And um, gladly he's around here and his, his studio is very good. He, he got a new studio, I think four years ago, he got a new studio which is even better than the first one. And um, working with Charles is, I always say, it's like going your, on your favorite vacation and at the same time being in a military drill camp. So basically that's the way to do it. It is very enjoyable. Um, unlike many musicians who say they don't like work in the studio, we really like working in the studio because it's, it's so interesting to build up the songs and after a couple of weeks we have a finished album. That's, I think that's, that's true magic actually. And um, Charles is not not um, going into details too much when it comes to recording. I mean, he's not the sort of a producer who changes the songs. He makes suggestions. Sometimes we agree and do it. Sometimes we don't. So basically it's, it's um, me and him change, uh, trading ideas back and forth. But mainly when we go to the studio, we are fully prepared with a demo where all the details are absolutely worked out. So we do not we do not do much in the studio other than really recreating the demo in a in a in a very proper way with the best possible performance. And and Charles is, is super helpful with that because especially when it comes to to the rhythm or to the vocals, there is no chance that you can record something that is not precise because he will not allow that. So usually he goes like, "Very good, please another one," or he says something like. Okay, and now a good one, please. Something like this. That's the usual things you hear. Okay, interesting. Why don't you take a break? <laughs> Something like that. So you, you really know that you can, as a, as a performer in the studio, you can sort of unplug your, your, your brain because you know he will take care of your takes. Everything you will have to bring up will be perfect. And you can just focus on, on, on really performing and, and he will carry all the responsibility for having a, a, a perfect product in the end and therefore it's um i mean charles is the only guy around the band who has been around us uh, ever since we started in 2015 everybody else is different and um even the bass player has changed so it's only the three of us and charles who have been around uh, since 2015 and i mean he he's a friend we trust him and uh, it's, it's, it's joyful to be there and very helpful and I don't think that we will change in the future or ever, I don't know. You gave some uh, interesting insights on the background of uh, Hammer King albums, but uh, looking beyond König und Kaiser, uh, how do you see the future of Hammer King? I mean, we have finally found the last missing piece in the puzzle, so to speak when we joined uh, forces with Extra Tours, which is, uh, I think, probably one of the, um, the the best booking agencies you can have for heavy metal in, in Germany or Central Europe. And um, we wanted to have somebody who really supplies us shows, because we have six albums with songs that you can play live, but we never played live enough. So basically, we wanted somebody who could help us really get on the road and not only play single club shows where everybody that shows up knows the band. We need to play in front of an audience that does not know the band. So in order to, to get more fans and I think Extra Tours are really very, very well made, very well working company and perfect for what we thought. And um, so I hope that they will send us on the road again in autumn. And um, there's festivals coming up in the summer and um, once again, I think we will try not to make another album next year and really play a lot. But then again, next year, Hammer King will be 10 years old. And the question is, what will we do to celebrate that? Maybe we should have, I think, a, a package could be interesting with a live show and all the bonus tracks that have been on the vinyl, on the CDs and wherever, so that it's easy for people to get all the songs. For me as a collector, I don't care about the cover, whether it's blue or green. I really want to have all the songs that a band did. And if there is a chance to get them all without buying the Japanese uh, edition for 50 euros just for one song, that would be interesting. And maybe do some remakes. I really don't know. A live album, the meaning of a live album has changed over the years. I mean, back in the day, it was the Holy Grail. Now it's basically the giveaway for the bonus edition. But still, I think after six, six, six studio albums, a live album could be a good idea, actually. In the beginning of the interview, you uh, 
uh, talked about uh, the beginning beginning of the band, but uh, what are like the best or the first memories that come to mind when you think about those early days? Um, I think the um, the fact that we we turned into Hammer King without planning it was for us or for me especially the, the greatest thing at all because there was no plan about it. It just happened. It felt very natural and very good. So having these songs that felt very much better than what we had done before in the other bands, getting an album together, recording with Charles Greywolf, having a, a label contract with Cruz del Sur, all that in a relatively short time, having a music video, a proper music video for the first time ever. So all these things came together quite quickly. Uh, I remember before we released the album, we had a, we booked a local cinema. I think I never told that story anywhere. We booked a local cinema and uh, we previewed the video before we had the label contract. And we invited everybody from our home t- hometown and they were sitting in the, in, the, in, the, in the cinema and we watched that video and it was super big. And that was also a very interesting moment. And I think what, what really made Hammer King better for us um, is that we did things in a in a bigger way from the beginning i mean showing the the, the video in the cinema uh, getting a, a label contract before we ever play a show that was something that we thought was was different from all the bands that we were in when we were young because basically when you're young people you play at the youth club and it doesn't really grow from there because the people regard you as a band from the youth club and then when, when we turned hammer king i said um even if we don't play many shows, let's at least try to play only shows that you are proud of showing your friends. Look, we played this, we, look, we played there. It doesn't necessarily have to be big, but if it's a club where, where it's happening, there is a small club like three hours from here, it's called Lemmy's, and there's pictures from Lemmy Kilmister all over the wall. This place is always packed. It's small, but it's a real scene, and everybody plays there. American bands play there. I think Fl- J- Flotsam and Jetsam, Jetsam played there when they were on tour. So that's a real nice place. It doesn't have to be big, but it has to be good, special, like Halford in, in Berlin, for example. And so we try to um, to to focus on on doing good things. Um, and I think it, it shows that it, it works in a way. We're getting we're getting a little bit bigger every time we do something. And of course, music and metal music is not about making money or being famous. But honestly speaking, when you invest your heart and your time and your money in your music, of course you want to make it bigger. It's it's not a secret. I think it's not bad. And um, therefore, as long as we have the feeling that we can take this this band somewhere we feel comfortable it doesn't have to be next year but but as long as it's growing and breathing we're fine and i think that's that's what i like best about this band that there's always something that happened and had never been there before like shooting a video in austria uh, for for kurdish and kaiser that will be out next week it's just we're just doing the cut for it going to a different place working with new people bringing people together all that i mean the more it gets, the more exciting it gets because it's more people around. It's always, you feel always enriched when there's other people around. I'm on the line. I just want to see. I'm 